now we're on to general business, which is I'm assuming uh, everybody's here for, right? The Western Community Energy Joint Powers Update. Okay, um, Tyler, you want to come and give a, a staff presentation? Sure. Good morning, Mayor and uh, Wildemar City Council. Nice to see you again. Uh, my name is Tyler Masters. I'm a program manager at the Western Riverside Council of Governments, or WRCOG for short. Uh, and I first wanted to, to mention thank you, Council Member Benoit, uh, for the streetlight call out earlier. Um, but I wanted to mention that um, we're just here to support you through that program. Um, the accolades really go to uh, Dan and Gary and team and, and all the city staff that have been working on the acquisition and retrofit of all of those streetlights uh, over the past number of years. It's been a slow process, but, but you're there. So, so we're, we're glad that, that folks are, folks are uh, enjoying it. Uh, I won't say anything more about streetlights because that was a public comment and, and city attorney might throw something at me if I, if I do more, um, <laughs> but we are happy to, we're gonna continue working with city staff and we can provide an update later if, if, if need be. But I'm here to provide a uh, an update on Western Community Energy. Um, probably about the fourth or fifth we've provided over, over about the, the last year or so. Um, so I'm happy to announce we're, we're coming with good news. Happy to announce we're going to be launching a Western Community Energy, providing electricity service in April and May. April within the city of Wildemar. Uh, but I'd like to back up just, just a skosh um, to talk first about what Western, community, what Western Community Energy, or WCE, is and how it, can, how it comes to be. Uh, it is enabled by state law. Um, that state law allows groups of cities and counties to come together and purchase electricity on behalf of their residents, businesses, community members, and then provide that discount, in our case, provide that discount um, back to those same residents, community members, and businesses. Um, it's also called Community Choice Aggregation, or CCA. Those are a number of acronyms that I want, I want to try to minimize as much as possible. Our energy program is called Western Community Energy, WCE. Uh, the current process right now, how this works uh, with Southern California Edison, they do the three steps uh, on the left. Southern California Edison purchases the electricity, the generation component, uh, they purchase that electricity, and then they use their wires, their transmission lines, and deliver it to you, the customer. What the WCE process would be, we would be substituting that first phase, the generation piece. We would be purchasing electricity on behalf of the residents and partnering with Southern California Edison to get it through their uh, transmission lines and deliver it to you, the customer. Edison still owns the infrastructure. I just want to make, make, that, make that point clear. Um, what, uh, and well, let me go back real fast, actually, sorry. Um, Western Community Energy right now is made up of uh, and will be launching service in, in six cities in, in April and May, and those cities are Eastvale, Harupa Valley, Norco, Paris, Hemet, and saving the best for last, Wildemar. Um, so I just wanted to mention that that is our board, that, that's, that's what makes up WCE. You created us. Our board of directors is made up of a, an elected official of each of those um, jurisdictions. Thank you, uh, Council Member Benoit, for actually chairing the WCE board of directors. And Tyler, there's no monetary compensation with that, correct? No. Okay. There's, there has been no monetary compensation. I'm just, I'm asking anything. for the public. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, so one of the things that, but what it will allow um, is participation in WCE for Wildemar in this case um, allows the residents the choice, the choice now on where they get their electricity and how much they pay for it. So they can now choose this WCE option, or they can choose to go back to Southern California. Now they have the choice where they did not have one before. Um, the local control over uh, energy programs, rates is a big thing. Now we, now our board can help uh, adopt and guide staff on the development of electricity rates. In the future, we can help to develop energy programs that are more localized for our subregion versus, you know, coastal communities. We're very HVAC driven, um, so we can develop energy programs that are more tailored to to our to our residents and businesses. Um, there are, you know, providing providing utility bill savings has been a really big uh, objective of our board, and we're happy we're we're going to be meeting that. And I'll go into that in a little bit greater detail. But a big thing is we're not. This isn't the first of its kind. This 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 initiative has a track record of success over the past couple decades. 
there are 19 similar energy programs across the entire state in Southern California up to Northern California and about 152 at last count cities participate in these energy programs. Not one of them has opted out to our knowledge. All of these programs have met the objectives of their board, whether it is green, cleaner energy, whether it is uh, providing that at a discount. Um, so going into that, you know, our, our, our board's goals and the goals that were um, directed to us by our board of directors was a little bit cleaner, a little bit cheaper. So we have two rates. That first default rate is um, offering 37% renewable um, energy. So 30% of the energy that takes the power of your house comes from wind or solar. Um, and that would be provided at a discount. Um, there's, there's the second rate that we have for the folks that have a little bit of a greener thumb that want to know that 100% of their electricity comes from a green source. They can opt up to that, 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 that rate as well. Where it's not something we're pushing. Both of those are completely voluntary. Again, you can go back to Edison at any time. Um, and then building up a reserve was a, was a really big uh, thing for uh, our board to look, that they wanted us to look into so that if there are ever changes in the markets, that we can make sure we have rate stability so that if Edison raises their prices, we're good where we're at. So our savings just looks a little bit better. Um, again, launch in April and May. Uh, April, we're launching in Norco, Paris, and Wildemar. May, follow, followed by May in East Vale, Hemet, and Harupa Valley. Um, Folks might have seen some pre-enrollment notifications, and if they haven't, I brought some extra. I brought some other uh, uh, um, items that, that folks can grab from the back. Um, as part of the state law, we have to send out pre-enrollment notifications two months prior to launch and two months post-launch. We put those in the mailboxes last Wednesday. We're being told that there have been a number of folks that have gotten them. So if, if not all of your residents, most of them probably have. Um, it has a lot of the information on it of what, what, WR, what WCE is, where you can get more information on our website, westerncommunityenergy.com, who you can call. We have a call center. Um, but it also has some information on if this isn't for you, you can opt out. You can opt out at any time. Uh, now, you can opt out 60, 60 days after enrollment with, with no issue. If you, you know, after that, um, Edison might charge, but that's on Edison. WRCOG is not charging customers for opting in or opting out. There's no cost from, from our stand, standpoint on that. Um, so this is, you know, probably not, not the best slide. It's not my favorite slide, but what it shows, uh, what it attempts to show there in, the, in that third column, medicine generation rate, we, we basically, how we adopted it, we adopted our rates a couple of weeks ago. How we created them was we took Edison's generation rate, we applied a 4% discount, then we removed all of Edison's surcharges, and that's how we came up with our generation rate. But what this means for us, so this is, this is the two most common accounts, your, your residential and your small, your small commercial. What this means for us as a resident, the average user in our area uses about 1,000 kilowatts a month in the summer, HVAC pool, what have you. Um, with the Edison rate, that's about 93 bucks. With um, WCE's rate, after you add back in those, those Edison surcharges that I was talking about removing, uh, we're about a little bit under $88. I get it, it's not a lot, it's $4, but you know, that matters for a lot of people. We have, you know, 20% of our subregion is on income qualified fixed incomes. $4 means a lot. I grew up, my parents were going, you know, halfway across the city to save a couple pennies just trying to find the cheapest gas station. So it does matter for, for some folks. Um, there's all of the information is on our website. Yes. Um, the bill will look the same. This is also on the website. This is one of the most common questions that we receive. Um, right now, to provide you a little bit of information, your bill is made up of two components. Generation, Edison charges you for where they purchase their energy, and then the delivery, how they get it to you through their wires. We would be absorbing the generation piece, so there would just be a simple line item change. The WC would now be providing the electricity, and Edison would still be delivering it to you. Some of the additional resources that I want to mention that we have um, at your disposal and uh, resources to your, um, to your city residents are we do have a, a call center that has been up and running since uh, last Monday. Um, 
It is open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. If you do call after hours, if you want to give them a call right now, you can still participate in the interactive kind of voice recording. One of those, you know, if you have a question on this, press 1, this, press 2, or you can leave a message and we'll, we'll call you back uh, the next, the following day. Uh, Edison's, uh, Edison's um, hotline is still up and running if you have questions on their side of the bill. Um, our call center is uh, for folks that might be viewing this online, 866-356-4175, or you can get, again, additional information by contacting me or on our website, um, westerncommunityenergy.com. Here's a picture of that, our website. Uh, we do have a number of things on there. We have our frequently asked questions. We have items on understanding the bill. Folks can opt up or opt out on the website. All you need is your SCE account number, your, the last name of the bill, and the zip code. It's that easy. We, all are, we have also developed a number of additional resources to provide city staff. A pop-up display that's at, now at your city hall has a little bit of information on the, the, the top frequently asked questions that I'll go over in a second, in addition to some of the additional resources that you can point. You can point, them to, you can point uh, questions to us, and we'd be happy to um, get folks uh, answered in a timely and thorough manner. Uh, some of the frequently asked questions, we've been at a number of community events. Um, most recently in Wildemar, the breakfast with Santa, where my daughter got her first picture with Santa. That was awesome. She's 14 and a half months. Yeah. No, she loved it. She loved it. And she got fed by city council. She was, she was, she was living the high life. <laughs> um, but we've been at a number of these events. We've received a number of the same questions. So we just want to share some of those with you. Um, does everyone need to participate? No. You can opt out at any time. You can go back to Southern California Edison. This is just a choice. Um, if I have solar, can I participate? This was probably the number one question. Uh, yes, you can participate. Not only can you participate, you would, you would be able to participate at an enhanced incentive. Um, the first is if you're a solar customer and you produce at the end of the year, you produce more electricity than you consume, Edison will, will call you up or, or send you mail or however they do it and tell you that we're going to cut you a check for this amount because you have this much kilowatt hour savings. Um, their rate over the past for cutting you that check, their rate has been about three and a half to five cents the past six months. Um, our rate, as we have approved it, and it will be for the whole year, is a little under seven cents, so you'll get a bigger check. Um, bigger credit or a bigger check, whatever you decide. Um, the additional item is if you, don't, if you don't generate more than you consume, you'll still be able to benefit from just the lower generation rate that we'd be providing to everybody. Um, one of the things that I do want to note with the solar customers is if you are a solar customer and you are in Wildemar and you haven't received your enrollment notification, that could likely be because we're, we're trying to true that up, huh, true that up with your true up. That doesn't work very well. We're trying to align that with your Edison true up. So Edison will true you up every 12 months. We know when that true up is, we want to make it as easy as possible for solar customers. So we're going to we're going to send the enrollment notifications for those folks closer to that timeline. So, for example, if I lived in Wildemar, don't hold me against the fact that I don't. But if I did and I had a solar on my trip in October, I would get those notifications closer to October than, than right now. Um, the second question we get on kind of the other side of the spectrum, you have your solar users, but then you have a lot of folks that participate in great Edison programs right now Maybe the income qualified programs are the best example. CARE, FARA, medical baseline, level pay programs. Um, these all will continue to exist. You will, those customers will be able to come over and participate in WC and again participate and receive that enhanced, dis that, that discount just by participating in WC. So you'll see, receive that discount in addition to what we're providing. Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't change. There's no need to reapply. The customer doesn't need to reapply, create some sort of new account or anything like that. So that was a, 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 an item I wanted to mention. If I stay with Edison, will I subsidize WCE customers? This was something that we were tackling over the past couple of years. These things called exit fees and surcharges and all of these things. Um, as customers depart from Edison, there is that surcharge that Edison does that, that will follow those customers. That has all been included in the rates. Those surcharges, those exit fees have been included in the rates and we're still seeing that rates will, or bills will be reduced by 2%. One 
more information, as I mentioned probably too many times at this point, our website, we have a call center. We are also on um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook primarily, I, I, I believe. Um, and our contact information, um, call center, and I'm on the bottom there if anyone ever needs to get a hold of me. If that concludes my presentation, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, I'm sure there will be questions. We have a speaker coming up, and then uh, we'll have our discussion. And stand by. <laughs> um, Monty, I got it right this time. Yeah. Right on him. Uh, good evening again. Uh, you guys all know I'm an engineer. You know, my DNA, I'm a skeptic. Mm -hmm. uh, I like numbers a lot more than words. I believe numbers. Uh, I distrust words. I have opted out. Uh, I guess tonight I just heard you're guaranteeing a 2% savings. When I wrote this, and in prior briefings, it was 1% to 2% maybe nothing but at least you can opt out at any time if you want to what I heard tonight is two percent that's going to save me four bucks a month forty eight dollars if I'm making a wrong decision by opting out tonight that'll be a forty eight dollar lesson learned <laughs> we have to take you back Mike. <laughs> well after 12 months sure. which brings me up to my next paragraph the final straw in my deliberations um, was learning some of the headline claims I'd heard in prior briefings here at the city council meeting or observed and heard in WCE promotional videos were I found deceptive. The statement you can opt in and out at any time while not, while not outright false is misleading. Not highlighting the Edison fee if you opt out after the first 60 days, whatever that Edison fee is, we don't know. Uh, not high, uh, after the first day, or the corollary fact that if you do opt out of WCE, Edison will not yet allow you to opt back in for 12 months was very misleading. I distrust folks who are not upfront with all the facts. The fact that in the fine print of last Friday's WCE mailer, those caveats were disclosed was too little too late to preclude my opting out. I managed a group of industrial engineers for several years. One of, the thing I, one of the things I learned was it is, it is rarely possible to the improve the efficiency of a system by adding another layer of costly bureaucracy. Even so, I can be convinced to have backed in. But you would have to prove it to me with the merits of doing so. You can do that with numbers, not rhetoric. Statements about local control, money back into the community, alleged cheaper rates attracting more economic development, and potential for even more wonderful stuff in the future is the kind of malarkey that reminds me of the false hyperbole leading up to Wildemar Cityhood. Local control was going to give us an incorporated Wildemar the opportunity to improve public safety, complete needed infrastructure improvements, and provide for orderly development without the need for new taxes. Nearly 12 years after cityhood, how'd that work out? Be honest. Thank you. Thanks, Monty. Um, before we start the comments, I want to say something. So the, the, the intent all along, and I'm glad there's a big turnout here. Uh, I have my, my own thoughts with the, the flyer going out before the meeting and everything else, right? But I think the, the silver lining with all of this is, I mean, we have a, a big group here that, that, is, that are curious and want to know what's going on, right? We can say to we're blue in the face, well, we've talked about it for two years, but it doesn't matter if you don't know about it, right? So, I, and I can make the arguments, well, they're live streamed and, you know, whatever. But I know we're all busy. Like, I'm, I'm busy. We're all busy. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy the flyers went out when they did because look at the turnout here. And I'm hoping uh, with the presentation Tyler gave, it belayed a lot of the concerns. I, and I, I, there's a, there are things to, to consider. I've seen comments like on Facebook, and I'll echo what Monty just said. It's hard to, to say, well, add another layer of bureaucracy. How does it make it cheaper? You know, And on the surface, it sounds very like, yeah, how does it make it cheaper? The, the infographic, and uh, Jeanette, I will ask if we can have this PowerPoint that Tyler presented, email blast it out. Um, and then I know you somebody in the back asked for the copy. If you're on the city mailing list on the email blast, you'll get the you'll get it tomorrow. 
Um, yeah, my copy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll give you my copy, too. Um, that being said, the, the infographic depicts really how we're able to save, how, we're, how the, the savings is even accomplished, right? SE is doing three things all at once with, you know, on their own. Now we can at least interject ourselves with, you know, Ben as the chair of the board right now, the, the six different cities, and collectively those representatives from the city can collectively go bargain with the entity that produces the power, right? And with that, uh, ideally, savings for ever. But that's how the savings are accomplished, and uh, I know there was concerns of Ben being on the board, and, you know, I think inherently when you're not in this realm, being on a board sounds like a lucrative thing. It's really, <laughs> it's not a paid thing. It's it's well, more. Well, I do receive a hundred and fifty dollars stipend for going to that board meeting, just like W R Cog and R C D C. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's, that's it. It's the. Yeah, I uh, I'm opting in. I, I live in Wildemar. We all live in Wildemar. Uh, I'm assuming we've all voted for it. And anyway, uh, I'm opting in automatically. I'm not going to opt out. Now I can tell you this: in twelve months, if I don't see a savings, if I don't see that forty-eight bucks, I'll probably opt out, and I'll give Tyler a call. Like, hey, what the heck, man? But uh, as of right now, I think it's a good thing, and the whole intent was to give us an option, really, because I'm tired of being dictated everything in my life from these companies and entities that don't care about me. Edison, water company, whoever, you name it, they, they just, you know, do their thing, right? So the intent is to give us some kind of control. So anyway, uh, those those are my, that's my little spiel. Uh, ben? Oh, your Marsh had some comments. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I know when you're here and you're saying it's only 2% or, um, but mostly every time we come up here every year, we have to raise the trash rates. And every year the water district is raising the water rates and um, Edison is raising their rates. So finally, we're giving you some good news that they're going down. And yeah, it might just be a little bit, but who knows in the future, Edison raises their rates and, and WC doesn't, then that disrupt that. 2% becomes yeah, 8%. Yeah. Exactly. It could be more. Um, but really what uh, Mayor Nick was saying is choice. So um, if we didn't do this and you heard that there was an option to lower your rates and we didn't give you that option, then you'd be mad at us also for that. <laughs> so this is the choice. Um, you are in, you can opt out, and there's no charge to opt out. So it, it, it's really just your choice and we wanted to offer this to the residents. And yeah, right now there's those six cities, but more cities are going to be coming on board after. Well, and Bridget, you mentioned that uh, if we were in a city that didn't do this, you know, the council would get, you know, hate yeah, mail for that too. Hammered. And that yeah. there are cities that are, have not done it and they're getting questions now why they're not involved. Um, but also with that, it, Maybe I'll take it. So, I have a question. I mean, yeah, fill it out and afterwards. Come on. Okay. Sorry, man. I don't want to. Uh, I've been a Southern. California Edison customer all my adult life. Mm -hmm. So why do I have to opt out? Why shouldn't I be opting in if I want that? <laughs> <They're broken. laughs> well, oh, really? Um, I mean, it's just it, another oh, little yeah. thing I have to do. Right. Well, you've been an Edison customer because that was your only choice. That was well, your only right. choice that you ever had. And that's so, the company I use. And, and you'll continue to get a bill from Edison. You'll, you'll continue to be an Edison customer. It's just that before Edison gets the power, we're gonna, the, the WC board will buy the power. Power will go to Edison, and the power will come to you. I got that's, all that. <laughs> Why do I have to opt Good. out? Why that's, shouldn't that's I be the able this, to That's the way voted. this state law is set up for this particular program is it's an opt-in program. So, or, excuse me, it's a, you have to opt out. Oh, yeah. Everyone gets put into it. It's, that's the way the state law is set up for this program. And that's what we're following. So this little section of my life is going to change without my wanting it to change unless I opt. And well, we've, when we've had their... several meetings throughout this whole last year on whether yeah. council was going to vote to go into this program or not. Um, and if you're on line with us, you get a notice of what's on the agenda every month. And we've gone over this several times and this council did vote to go with this program. So that's how you have to opt in and opt out because we all agreed to do this and there was nobody saying don't. It's been two years. I mean, yeah. th that's the unfortunate piece. I'm happy you're here now. It's just... Well, maybe I should have got a mailer two years ago. 
Uh, if you sign up for emails, you get the agendas emailed to you, and you can see what's on there. And if you want to come to the meetings and get the information, plus we had uh, information at our city events. Okay. I I, I understand. Speaker coming up. Yeah, I I understand the some of the, the frustration, and that's not a not a bad point. I, I we get it, but I. Uh, there is also, I mean, I, you know, we can go back and forth with different nuances. Hey, it's been two years. We've done this. We have email blasts. We have Facebook Live. We have live streaming. We have this and this and this. But we're all busy, and that's just the reality. If you want to be involved or engaged with city politics, you're going to be. If you don't want to be, you're not going to be. No, it's involved in your uh, community. But uh, it's being involved in your community. We felt as a council this was a, a good thing for the residents because at the minimum you're saving two percent. You know, if it's four bucks or five bucks a month. You know, we actually didn't think there'd be any kind of churn. Everything we decide up here, we still have to. You know, it's still me too that's affected by it. And like I said, I'm opted in, and Monty and I will have the discussion in a year if the forty-eight bucks was you know given or taken. But uh, yeah, okay, I got two more speakers. Um, before I start, before we close this and we start doing our own communication, is there anybody else that wants to, to, to come and talk and say their piece? I have a question on that. Uh, you presented that you have to wait until April when you get opted in to opt out. Can we opt out like tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, you can opt out. That's why you got the 60 day notice right now. You can opt out right now. Thank you. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, George. So to be clear about it, do I understand, I, I have this uh, a news announcement here, do I understand that we're all automatically opt in and then we can opt out? Yes. yes. Yep. You don't yes. want to save money, go ahead and opt out. Okay. Sounds yep. Fine. Yep. yep. That's your choice. Yep. All right. Uh, thank you, George. Donna Poland. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Get your steps in. <laughs> I, All right. had, I had specific questions as to purchasing. When he said SCE purchases the electricity, right. mm -hmm. okay. Now WCE is going to purchase the electricity. From whom are they going to purchase? The so we put out an RFP for providers of electricity. So what um, that mean? when you RFP? drive down, when you when you drive out through the Coachella Valley, you see the windmills out there. Mm -hmm. There's three different companies that own windmills. There's a couple of companies that own solar out there. There's other companies further out into the desert that own mm -hmm. solar farms. We put out basically a request for proposals for those different purveyors that have power. Hey, as a where we want to buy power, what would the price be? And that all happened in the last uh, two months, Tyler, or three months. We've been doing that. And, and, to, and actually, today at the WC meeting, we approved purchasing up from five different vendors. After we're getting back seven different proposals and making sure we're getting the best rate for our customers. This and is wind and solar. Or that, that's some of the. That's about thirty-six percent of it. But then we also or there's also the other stuff out there we have to buy. So whether that's I, I can't Will remember you the purchase we, anything from SCE. No, well, SE has a very limited amount of generation left in this state, and my understanding is I don't, I don't think they put it on the open market. They were not one of our purveyors, right? Well, who do they yeah. buy from? They buy from all, all over the place. I thought so, they were the ones that generated. Yeah, that, that, that was true until about, I think it was 20 years ago when they deregulated the, the market here in California. So about 20 years ago, basically, the um, it was state law or federal law that did that. Uh, do you remember? I think it's state law that basically told Edison, you're no longer allowed to be the monopoly of power. You have to divest yourself of all of your generation and buy that from other people because it was looked at that they were sort of in a monopoly. So now, now Edison, for the most part, buys a lot of their power on the open market, just like we're buying power on the open market. So they have to buy it from other people. So Edison does not generate as much electricity as they used to. In fact, they have very few projects now that they're their own. But they're, Edison be, being a much larger company wouldn't they get a better price for the same things that we six or seven? You would think so, right? but there's a lot of contracts that Edison entered into that we're actually be able to, able to find savings on as a smaller entity. But and when I say smaller, we're doing this with these other six cities. So it's almost, uh, what's the, the, the I think it's 400,000 uh, meters, right? Wasn't that the number? And, and 110,000 customers. So, okay, so wrong number there, sorry. Uh, but it's, it's more than enough to be competitive in this market. And there are much smaller CCAs out there as well. We're actually going to be coming into this as a, a medium-sized uh, consum consumer choice group. So 
This gives us the option to go out and buy that power. We've done that, and we've been able to find those savings. Okay. Speaking to options, specifically to this program, there were three t different options you could take. Right. What is the difference in the price going to be on these options, and how, how, why would I choose wind or solar? I mean, obviously, if that's a, better, a cheaper option, I would choose that, but what does that mean? It's not a cheaper option. Right now, if you want to be 100% green energy, it is a, a more costly option. Tyler, uh, can you correct me if I'm wrong? Five, five cents a kilowatt more? 1.5. One, sorry, 1.5 cents a kilowatt more if you want to have all green energy, but that's your choice. That's a feel-good thing. Yep, my, all my energy is green in my house. That, that's it's a feel good thing. And yep. on all, all these different fees that are listed on this thing here, the two percent that we save is supposed to be exclusive of those or inclusive of those. Which fees are you referring? Well, to? it says SCE also charges WCE customers a power charge in difference adjustment and a franchise fee surcharge. Both are calculated based on the number of kilowatt hours used each month. And then over on billing, it says this bill includes all recent electric charges, including WCE's power generation charges. Tyler, you want to clarify that or? Yeah. 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 That way folks at home can hear too. Thank you for your concerns and questions. Yep. It's, this is, I'm, I'm happy you're here to engage with this. And you too, Tyler. Thank would you. It, would it be helpful if I go back to this, that? The confusing slide, it kind of it kind of mentions a little bit about that. Can sure. I, can I point bring a slide again? Sure. Yeah, the, it's it's all included. So the so the the PCIA, the power uh, charge and difference adjustment, um, ad, all additional SCE surcharges. There's there's surcharges like this at is, this CTC. Is a WCE power and, and that's it. And then the generation piece. So you take SCE's generate or what WC's generation. You add the Edison surcharges, and you're still. Okay. That's our total build rate. Your bill is still going to go down 2%. And on this thing that I'm going to get blasted, it's going to be, it's going to tell me, like, when I look at my Edison bill and see per kilowatt charge, it's going to tell me on this thing somewhere what the per kilowatt charge is going to be. Right right now, it's on your Edison bill, it should, it should show you that. Yeah, how much you're currently. It's on my Edison bill. Right. right. Yeah. Is it going to show me on so that you're, what you're going to charge me? Right. When you get the Edison bill after April, it'll actually stay on the generation side. It'll say WC is doing it, and it'll tell you the, the you price. Can't, you can't tell me now what I'm going to be charged before I make a decision to opt in or out? 2% less, 4% less of the generation rate, but 2% overall. Okay, but I have all different charges on the SCE bill that, you know, for Tier 1, Tier 2, you know, yep. uh, winter rate. Is we, that we, we have all, all those rates are on the website. Right. Yep. So, so I didn't see them when I went to their website. I just saw a thing that I made a copy of, but it's basic. Under, it's under billing, and if you if you click billing and rates, it's un, it's under there under under residential rates. Uh, I would also like to mention so all of those you know the on peaks, the mid peaks, the off peaks, but that's all in there for all of the residential rates. Um, you can compare that then to Edison's uh, tariff. Um, what I would also like to mention to uh, a, a previous. Yes, yeah, sir. A previous <laughs> comment is uh, as part of this every single July, we're actually going to we're, we're required to do joint rate comparisons. Right. So we are actually required to put our rate right next to Southern California Edison. Southern California Edison takes the lead, and they've selected to to do those in July. So those will be on our website starting July. Those will be in the mails starting July. Edison takes the lead on that. We give them our information. They populate that side-by-side -side comparison, but you can also look at our adopted rates and, and theirs uh, on our website as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Okay. Well, that's that. Uh, are there any... Yeah, I, Tyler probably should come back up. All right, Tyler, we got questions for you. So I've got notes all over the place, so hopefully you'll bear with me a little. Um, one of them, so some of these notes are from comments that people had mm -hmm. about this, so this is a chance to, for them to get their questions answered. So one of them, though, it was um, talked earlier about the being opted in automatically. She said her concern is that she's placed in without permission, and they, they have to opt out. I don't uh, if they don't want it. Legally, should it be the other way around? And I explained that basically it's a state law. And I go, when was the last time Sacramento really did something that was necessarily good for the people? But um, so that's it's the law is why they have to opt out. AB one seventeen. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, on another issue, like I said, not all of them are for you, but you might as well stay there. Uh, 
I have a video from April of 2018 with uh, SCE's presentation that I generally do a blog write-up of these meetings. So if anybody wants to see what they had to say then, uh, that'll be sometime at the end of the week. Um, let's see. So then I'm, I'm correct that opt out. There's no charge by WRCOG or w, uh, WCE, right? Okay. But that, but there could be one to get back into the other people by Edison, right? Okay. That's and they haven't control. disclosed what that might be. That's out of our control. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now I've heard somebody um, sent links, which I've, of course everything on the internet is true. So uh, reports about Ventura cities opting out of their version of a CCA. Are you familiar with that? Um, yes. So there were there were a couple of uh, articles on that, and it wasn't it wasn't the entire city opting out of uh, Clean Power Alliance. Is the um, there are twenty eight uh, city CCA in LA County, and they uh, participate in Ventura County as well, I believe. Um, it wasn't cities that were opting out. It was just certain rates. Um, certain rates for certain municipal accounts that were actually actually made more sense that those accounts stay with Southern California Edison. So they opted just those couple right. of accounts. I think it was a couple of streetlight accounts here and there. Our um, not alarming. Our, our rates are still conducive to streetlight sure. being. Uh, okay. Yeah. Then, and you had mentioned that these are up at your... Those are on uh, the staff report. Uh, staff, uh, right. They're on the staff report. We're going to email blast it tomorrow. Right. Well, they're, they've been on the internet for like a day and a half. I, I uploaded them a day and a half ago. So if anybody's ever heard of Wildemar Rap, that's where they're at already. Um, and I shared them on like the various local groups. So they're already out there. Thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah, so part of the problem is it's the old Ben Franklin, you know, the ounce of prevention is worth more than the pound of the of cure. And it's a shame that the, the notices came out at, you know, before this, because if the people would have just been told what was up, then it would have been, none of this would have happened, I don't believe, as far as the internet. Um, well, it would have been approved, and then it would have been a week, of, you know, too little too late. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, that's, it's water under the bridge, things happen, yeah. that's, that's fine. All right, so again, to, to confirm, other than I guess in small cases, SCE doesn't produce the power these days. I guess they might have some power generators, but to, to clarify, it, SCE doesn't produce the power. They purchase energy from the same markets. Right, okay. Purchasing energy from too, yes. So what is Wildemar's buy-in cost to be part of this? Nothing. Okay, because uh, I've, I've heard. WRCOG has, has um, provided all upfront capital to develop and implement WC. Okay, and we don't have to pay that back or? No. See, that's good to find out. So I have, so what is in it for WRCOG slash WCE or what's in it for the city? These are different questions that could have been on the internet. Providing a savings to our customers or to yeah. our constituents. Our residents get a or choice. The, or WRCOG, I mean, nothing, just, okay. I mean, yeah, the, the, the whole reason for the city doing this was to help the residents out. Right, I mean. I mean, like, there was no, there's no shady behind the it. No, 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 I'm saying, because I, if, if I was putting this together, I would say the residents, you're going to pay the same bill, but we're going to buy the, mar the energy off the market, and then we're going to take that savings and then bring it to cities and fix roads or fix what, do no, whatever our WR costs. business to make money. Like it's no, that's, just, well, I mean, that would make sense rather than me get 40 bucks at the end of the year. If we all put our 40 bucks in, I know well, we're not coming up with something new, but I'm saying yeah. I would actually applaud if that was the case. So then there would be this big pool of money to do local things. Not give things. any money to the residents and not to show a savings? They already have to spend thing. so much money to yeah. Yeah. All right. manage yeah. that. So. That would be illegal taxation, Joseph. <laughs> Well, again, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not from Sacramento, so I'm not sure how what's legal up there or not. I'm still just uh, still got one foot in uh, being a common man. So, um, so then one this is a little bit um, difficult because I just basically copied it from somebody's thing. So, okay, today I received this. What I understood is that WCE will be our energy energy yeah. supplier. And why did this become automatic? This is confusing. Sixty days from when? 60 days is too little to know if this is convenient for me. And this paper seems nothing uh, important for notification. Uh, I knew about this post. Uh, I knew about it because of your post. Is this good for me or bad for me? I'm six months here and I didn't hear about this before. Edison Edison said anything about this. I guess the point is, 
it came in with a bunch of, not that you planned this, but it came in with a bunch of uh, political campaign ads that just went straight into the trash. That's what I had at least half a dozen people report that. And it's not like everybody in the town talks to me. So I think that was a concern from the people. And I wanted to air the concerns. I, we heard but that we it, have had it on the agenda. We've had it been on the agenda several times that we've talked about it. And if I could interject for just a second. One issue this group, WCE, had uh, was about a almost 12 month back and forth with Edison on when or when not we could launch. Um, I will tell you that our original uh, proposal, I think we had us May for this year. Edison came back at one point and said, no, we can't do it. Then we're upgrading our computers. You're going to have to wait. Uh, at one point, they told us about another year. Um, and then it then came back. Maybe we can do it in June. Um, we finally settled, I think, on June. And then six months later, Edison turned back. Oh, you know what? We're never mind. We can't upgrade our computers yet. We go ahead and launch. Maybe we can do some of you in April and some of you in May. Picking the date, picking the week, picking the month became a complete it's struggle. So I, I, I get the concern. This right. was not planned. This was no. not uh, anything that we did other than trying to get this out to our residents and, and do it in a timely manner. And, and you know, we did not want to wait another year and have staff spinning their wheels for a year to, and costing more money. So No, I agree with that. Yeah. And, and I just want to provide one clarification. Yeah. The 60 days is after after we begin servicing. So right now we're in February, you're receiving the pre-enrollment notifications you will receive in February, in March, we'll start servicing electricity in April, then you have 60 more days, you can still opt out without any. So really we have four months from now, um, that, that window. So it's not, sure. it's not just the two months now, it's two months before and two months after consecutive. Sure, well the last question was, uh, Will people get charged for equipment upgrades and maintenance on the SCE side of things? Not from WCE. The, the, the infrastructure... But no, wires. they're saying right now that, like, so if you're just an SCE ratepayer and they have to go replace infrastructure. I mean, I'm not, I don't remember getting a surcharge. Hey, this is for that work we did last month. So the question were, is, you know, will they get, with a new W... Um, CE customers be charged for SCE upgrades and maintenance? Do you know that uh, question? So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go back to the bill. Hopefully it'll provide a little bit of clarification. The bill is made up of the generation piece, which would be WCE, and the, the delivery piece and the transmission piece, which is still Edison. Um, Edison would be asking the CPUC to increase the transmission piece if they're doing infrastructure improvements. Um, so that part of the bill that is still Edison's could increase for those for those pieces, but ours wouldn't. Right, but so they would do that normally, is what you're saying. Yes. Either way. Okay. Yeah, it's going to happen regardless. Right. Well, that's, that was the question, so that's why it's. It might be. Yeah. No, <laughs> not the fine. most it's, fun it's, question it's to have, but it's better yeah. to get them out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Marcia or Bridget. Any? Nope. nope. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. There's two more speakers. So you know, once we get to the comments up here, we're we're done with speakers typically. But there's a big group here, and you guys all came to learn things and ask questions. So I want to at least. George, want to come up again? Yeah. All right. I apologize. No, it's okay. I asked this thing when I was up here, but at any rate, uh, as an example, uh, I have a water bill every month. Mm -hmm. I have to pay whatever units that I use during that month. With Edison, I'm on what they call a level pay p uh, plan, and they it ends in April every year. So whatever I accumulate in the way of electricity, I, c I don't have to pay anything until the end of the year. But when come April, I have to pay that amount. So my question is, with if... Uh, you you if, pay a monthly amount every month, though, right? Yeah, I, I use yeah. so many kilowatt hours a month. But, uh, but, and I just look at my bill and say, well, I use this much there. What's the difference between? And I give them so much money. But I'm not charged a specific amount for what I do use every month, if you understand what I'm saying. Tyler, you got that? The level pay option? Yeah. Well, I want to know is, are you going to, if I, if I use 10 kilowatts, we'll say this mm -hmm. month, are you going to charge me and do I have to pay for 10 kilowatts this month? Or can I settle my bill after 12 months like I can with Edison? So the question is, is the level pay plan still included? With the... 
So George, you only pay Edison once a year? No, I pay them every. I you I pay, pay a certain them, amount I, every I month. I pay them two hundred dollars this month. I may pay them three hundred dollars next month, but I don't have to pay anything if I don't want to. As long as you screw up in April, yeah. The, okay. I have to pay the, the full thing if if I don't do that. I never heard so of I that. I wondered that was, if you guys will allow me. The intent is for you to maintain whatever agreement you have with Edison right now. And Tyler, if you want to get George's info, and you know, you guys can work that out. But the intent is for you to be able to stay with your whatever you're doing right now is carried on. That's the the, the entire intent. Right. Okay. Only you save another five percent or four percent. Gotcha. Yep. Thank you. No problem. Okay, um, Sylvia. Hey guys, I'll make it quick. So, infrastructure is still going to be maintained with Southern California Edison. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. Southern California Edison has vegetation, crews, and everything. Are we contacting Southern California Edison or WCE? Because right now, what it's I all understand, still through Edison. So all through Edison. Right. So all they're just doing is just buying it, but everything infrastructure. So if I wanted the pole moved in the middle of the yep. Yep. property, yep. Yep. I don't you'll even still get an Edison. Them. You'll still get I an go Edison bill. Yep. Edison. Yep. So I would be calling Edison. Yes. So instead of just dealing with one company, I would be dealing with two. No. You're probably not going to need to call us for anything other than if you want to opt out. Well, no. What, I'm, what I mean is, okay, so they will handle the phone calls in regards to that. So you well, have a client that buys a house. In the middle, the pole is there. You can move it because you do subdivide the property. You still go, you go to WC. Edison. No, mm -hmm. it's all Edison. Edison. Nothing changes. Your, Edison. your bill will still have Edison on it. Yeah. Right. Right. Like but that. what I'm saying is the all services for that. All through Edison. We're only doing, we're only buying the power. Okay. So all through Edison. So all I can deal with two companies. No, you right. deal with one, basically you deal with one. Anything to deal with the meeting of how the power is transferred, delivered to your home, the poles in the ground, all that stuff is still Edison. Right. All we're doing is purchasing, all WCE is doing is purchasing the power from the same place Edison's purchasing it, purchasing it from, only for cheaper. And then we say, hey, Edison, give this to, our, to all your customers through all your stuff, your lines and everything else. If you want to move a pole, it's still Edison. If you want to... Disconnect service, reason, yeah. all through Edison. So you, you shouldn't have to, yeah, you shouldn't have to call WC for anything unless you want to opt out. There shouldn't be a reason for you to opt out. Yeah. Oh. If you call Edison... W, just, they're just dealing my bill. But everything I have to do in regard to... They're only one part of the bill. The bill's still going to look like that, except it's going to say WCE in the middle. Yeah, and you okay. still pay Edison, and then Edison, Edison and bill. WC true up themselves. You don't even have to touch them. You don't pay them anything. Yeah. You just pay Edison. They'll tax Edison with their, okay. you know, piece whenever that however they do that but so all in your reality pain. i don't really ever deal with them. No. no that's the whole thing is oh. <laughs> only you save four percent or two but, you know five bucks so here's the good news right. if you did call wc's hotline and you do have an edison they'll connect you to edison and edison <laughs> yeah. if you call them and for some reason you do need to talk to wc they well, will because, connect the you. reason why i'm ask, uh, saying is because for a lot of our elderly they'll be like okay well mm -hmm. i'm used they're, to calling just they're probably still not keep calling edison edison because okay. the bill's going to look just like that. So yep. unless they scrutinize the bill and they go down to this two, number two, number three, where it's going to show you your, it's going to say WCE. Otherwise, they're not even going to notice. And all the phone numbers on the bill, for the most part, will still be the regular Edison <laughs> phone numbers you're used to. There might be a phone number on the bill by the WCE portion. Right, Tyler? Yeah. And then we, I just pay. They want you on the bill? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm enrolled online with SCE. You're fine. You're, fine. Yeah, yeah. you're online with who? I'm SCE. Yeah, and you'll still stay online with SE. Your bill payments will still keep continuing the same way. None of that changes. They still log in. It's still going to be. It's still going to ask to authenticate your computer every time you log in every month. If we uh, if we made everybody change to another group and we wanted all your credit card numbers, I think I would be lynched. We were, yeah. we would not do that. So, okay, um, I think we've had a lot of discussion with this. Is there a motion? Well, it's just a receiving file, so I think we can just move on to council communications. My God. We already did it. Okay. Hey, we received we, we filed it. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Let's see where we're at. Okay, council communications. communications. Ben, you're up. Well, I was going to talk about that I went to the WC meeting today and set our rates. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't I think we've talked about that enough. Um, 